Hi, welcome to the Libertarian Alternative. My name is Mark Selzer. The Libertarian Alternative is an educational television show brought to you as a courtesy by the Libertarian Party. Today's, today we're in the lovely Atlanta, Georgia Marriott Marquis Hotel, and this is the presidential nominating convention of the Libertarian Party. Today's guest is... Ed Thompson. Ed Thompson. Now, Ed, you recently ran for governor of Wisconsin. Yes, I did. So what happened in that rate? What percentage did you get? I got 10.5%, uh, 185,000 votes. My brother Tommy, who was the former governor for 16 years, said, you won't get 2%. What's the matter with you even running? But so we shocked a lot of people with what we got. We did a poll mark right after the, the election, uh, three days afterwards, and uh, a Rasmussen poll. And uh -huh. it said that uh, we would have got 22.5% of people thought we had a chance of winning. So and that was the same number that Jesse Ventura was at week before he won in Minnesota. Wow. So we were, you know, we were in the hunt. And that was the, the first time for a libertarian ever in Wisconsin that, you know, the, the the uh, previous governor that ran in Wisconsin got one half of one percent, and he's a very brilliant man, Jim Miller. Uh -huh. But it was just so, you know how they treat the libertarians, right? You know, like second-class citizens. Uh -huh. so, so it was fantastic for us, and we were very proud of that. Well, well not anymore. They're not no. going to be treating us bad no, anymore. They, I don't they think know. So. They better not. I was mayor of Toma, the small uh -huh. town, you know that I. Did that after the big raid, of course, with a. I don't know if you know right. about well, that. Right. Well, let's tell the story of that. Now, this guy that you ran uh, against uh, actually came in and uh, arrested you for video poker machines, which well, were legal or should have been legal. The district attorney and the chief of police of, of, of Toma, they all had conspired because my brother was the governor, uh -huh. that they were going to make an example. And they raided, actually, they raided 43 taverns in Monroe County on wow. the same night. And they confiscated all the video poker machines. And can you imagine them having a problem with gambling when the state's got the video lottery and the uh, Native Americans have casinos all over Wisconsin? And it's so, you know, I was just trying to compete. And, uh -huh. and actually, the district attorney the year previous told us that he wasn't going to bother us with the video. So I had put him in, and, and then that night, they charged through the door at midnight, the busiest night I had in, you know, on December 13th, the four cops come pounding through the door. It's a raid! <laughs> And chased all the customers out. I didn't know what to do, Mark. I was furious. I, here I had a letter from the district attorney saying we could have them, and now they raided me, and it's all over the newspapers. Ed Thompson's facing eight years in prison, you know, $40,000 in fines, and uh, of course the district attorney, he ra raised in all his glory and offered a deal of a, if you'd pay everybody, you'd pay $5,000, he'll let you keep your license and stay in business. But I said, no, you know, I. I just came out of real hard times. I built this business up from nothing. I was my own. You're the employee. little guy. Yeah, little. And I was, I was furious. I had built a business from my own myself being the only employee to, you know, probably 25 people, and uh -huh. it was going good. And I was giving it everything I had, and here they raided me. So I, I decided to. I didn't care. I said, if this is what our country's about, if this is what they're doing with all the things that they've allowed and to stop a small businessman to trying to compete, then I'd just soon go to prison. And uh -huh. I meant it. And I meant it with everything I had. So everybody was telling me, my brother Tommy called, take the deal, you dummy. What's the matter with you? Take the deal. I said, I, no, I won't take the My attorney told me to take the deal. The district attorney had a special meeting with it, you know. I said, absolutely not. Wow. You know, and so good for you the day of the trial here they come 59 jurors everyone but three said i agree with it they walked out <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't find a jury wow they had to drop the case they couldn't find a jury to convict you they couldn't even find a seat of jury well, they the went into the streets mark they to get more and they brought these people up in wheelchairs and walkers and they still would so that that made me feel that, you know, is maybe that, there is something here. Is that when you ran for mayor of the town? That next time. Th then the, the mayor came up. That that was happened. The trial was in 98. I ran for mayor in 2000 against a very popular incumbent mayor. Uh -huh. And uh, I was Why? upset with the police chief. He was the one, him and the... <laughs> 
him and the district attorney were the ones that conspired to to put this big raid on. You know, it was just a political move, is what it was. Uh -huh. So I, you know, I. I ran for mayor. I had never ran. I was the most apolitical person probably that walked the face of the earth. Were you registered as a libertarian no, then? No, I was not. I was. I, I just was apolitical. Right. I, the last thing I cared about was politics. I thought they were phonies. I didn't have anything to do with them. So I ran for, for mayor and I, I won by a landslide against this guy. And so you, and when did you register as a libertarian? I registered for a libertarian. Actually, no. Actually, I'd had uh, this. Jim Miller had came up right before the trial and told me about the Libertarian uh -huh. Party. Yeah, we would, we wouldn't have a problem with Yammy. And I said, Oh, really? And he's the guy that got half a percent. Right. And he he was running. And I said, Yeah, sign me up. In fact, sign me up for a life membership. And I did right then. And so I was a, a member of the Libertarian Party, but I didn't really know a lot right. about libertarianism. And mm -hmm. I was a. But I liked the idea that they would allow us to do this, and I and they and I knew that they were the third biggest political party. So I, I was interested in, in joining them, and I did. And I bought a life membership. So at that time, I was mayor. I was a card carrying libertarian. There's a great libertarian named Richard Body, and he says he says something that a lot of libertarians know. It's a quote: Libertarians say, "People are fooled in mass, but enlightened one at a time." And when the police knocked on your door. You were enlightened one at a time. Yeah, I was when the IRS knocks on your door, when a <laughs> yeah. government agency knocks on your door, we call that being enlightened. <laughs> Boy, you wake up fast, let me tell you. And, and it was just, well, it was, it was that anger really that pushed yeah. me more than anything. The and same uh, thing happened to me in my business. I was had a zoning tax. They wanted $15,000 for a zoning tax on my business, shut me down. And now I'm no longer employing people on Hollywood Boulevard. Yes. Wow. So it's awful. It just a, yeah, it, it, it government is, you know, the one party that runs our country is just it's uh, it, it's really a, it's a, a sick society of where mm -hmm. they have taken us, how they're taking our money, invading uh, sovereign nations with, with you know for no reason. Right. And. Uh, you know, where are we going to go? Are we going to continue to allow this to happen? Or are we going to start standing up and be patriots and have the courage to stand up and say, this isn't freedom, this is tyranny. Mm -hmm. And we better have the courage to, to stand up and say, no more. You know, at, at every level, at the local level, at the county level, at the state level, and at the federal level. So this guy that was showing off by coming in and arresting you because oh. you were the, the governor's brother, uh, then he decided to run for governor, and then you ran for governor against him and made sure that he didn't win. Well, this, the d attorney general at the time uh, was, was Doyle, uh, and actually he was the Democrat uh -huh. attorney general, and the uh, Republican who was under Tommy, who, Tommy's lieutenant governor, was Scott McCallum. And actually, Doyle won. I pulled equally from both of them, you know, in the 11 and a half percent. Uh -huh. So it was uh, the Republicans blame me for um, them not being reelected to, to the governorship. <laughs> but, you know, you know, it was a Republican governor, a Republican sheriff, and a Republican district attorney that raided me. Uh -huh. So I didn't feel too bad about hurting <laughs> the Republicans. <laughs> not that I had any much, much love for the attorney general who. Uh, it, it was in favor of the raid too. One state right. person was there, so um, you know I debated them all several times, and um, we did credible. Yeah, well, we did very well. That was a very, very high percentage. I just one of the highest percentage, or the highest percentage, I think we've ever gotten for governor in a state. Yeah, I think. I think, you know, that's I think in true. Alaska, in 1980, they had 14 oh, really? percent. 14 percent. Well, second highest. Second highest. But I think there's, there's more people in Wisconsin. Than yeah, that, well, that was during the 80s, you know, when that right. Ohio was there. And the, so, but yeah, on the mainland United States, that's by far the highest percentage. So now the, your brother, okay, he was governor of Wisconsin. Then right. he left and he went to be on the, was it the House and? No, it's Health and Human, health and Services, human Services Department. On the cabinet. Uh, right. Cabinet. And he's a Republican. And what does he have to say about this this uh, crazy libertarian stuff? Well, he stopped after the, the Republican <laughs> convention in La Crosse last Saturday. And he said, Ed, you're so popular in Wisconsin, you could run for anything as a Republican and win. <laughs> I said, Tommy, I don't want it that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 not, not as a Republican, anything yeah, but a Republican, Republican, absolutely. And that's a, we need an alternative to the two other parties. It seems like those two one parties party. are that's the same thing. That's only one party. That's one party. Mark, you know it. Yeah. I mean, they're both for what? The war? They're both, 
for more taxes. They're both, for, they're always for the expediency, you know, mm -hmm. what we can do fast so we can get more votes. They all lust for power at an incredible level. No, I don't see much difference between the two of them. They're both growing government. The, the Republicans now are growing government and, and social spending worse than the Democrats. Worse than the Democrats, if you can believe that. And the thing that's important <laughs> about this is that if you don't have a third party, who's going to say that the Republicans are increasing social spending worse? The Republicans aren't going to say it because they're afraid the economic conservatives are going to leave their party. The Democrats aren't going to say it. What are the Democrats going to say? Hey, the Republicans are much better at growing the social programs that you uh, joined us to grow. So, you you know, they're not going to say it. We're the only party the that's going to say that. We're the only one standing up and saying, listen, people, there is an alternative out there. There is an alternative. And please look at us. Please look at what we're doing. Please, please just check us out. Look at uh, uh, Representative Ron Paul. What a brilliant man. Yeah. I mean, that's so dedicated to liberty and freedom. And, and you know, this is the type of leaders we need. And I, I mean, he's running, he is a Republican, but ran as a Libertarian for presidency in 88, I believe it, wasn't it? Yeah, he ran for, he was our presidential candidate. He was a Republican. He's currently still in Congress disguised as a Republican. Right. And the Republicans have done everything they possibly can to try to get rid of him. Oh, they, they tried changing him. his district. <laughs> they have brought, Bush down there to run against him. They have done, they've spent millions of dollars to try to get rid of him and it just hasn't worked. They haven't it's worked just because wonderful. people will see when they have a real leader, a person that's really concerned about the constituency, you know, they will reelect him. And I think that's what we as libertarians have to do. We have to point out Ron Paul, we have to point out the, the people in our party that can get elected and get behind him because we can make a difference, you know. I did in Tome when I became mayor. I, I eliminated 14 of, of uh, 27 committees in a small town. It was yeah, just, wonderful. You know, it saved the knocked. Uh, you know. So when we say smaller, smaller government. government. Smaller we, we, government. We really mean it. Unlike the other parties, when we say smaller government, we mean smaller government. When With the Republicans everything. say it, they mean less of your kind of government, <laughs> but more of our kind of government. That's you exactly know, we right. really mean it. And from. I think if, from the liberal point of view, you would say more civil rights, because that means the more civil rights you have, the less, the less government you have. It means there's less things the government can do. The, you, uh, the re Republican would say reducing the size and scope of government. So we're, we're something there for everyone. I always say increase our civil rights until government has to shrink. Well said, Mark. Yeah, you know, that's exactly the whole point. They have taken our rights away from us. They 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 destroyed the Constitution. Look what they've done with the with the Second Amendment. Yeah. They, you know, it just uh, every right we have. Every the right, right to we make have. a buck. It's your free, right to make a buck. They went after your right to make a buck and right. support your family. Are you married? You have doing kids? what this government itself is doing. <laughs> yeah. The government legalized gambling for themselves with the lottery. Legalized gambling for the Indy casinos, but say, oh, are you small businessmen? No way. Forget it. Forget yeah. it. So. So. Are you married? Do you have kids? I was married. I'm divorced. Uh -huh. I have four children. Four uh, children. Six grandchildren. Where do they live now? My children are in uh, Virginia, Kentucky, and uh, one is in teaching uh, English to German college students, and he'll be uh, getting a scholarship to Michigan State Law School. And my oldest son is in college right now to uh, teach math. So what do they think of your run for governor? Oh, they were excited about it. You know, they were... Uh, they were raised quite, quite apolitical. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, so well, you know, libertarians are. Bad. The, I never knew you were interested in politics. <laughs> <laughs> we're the we're the we're the party for people that aren't interested in politics. Yeah. You know, we're the we're the party that wants to reduce the uh, the politicians' involvement in your life. You know, if you don't like politics, we're the party for you. If you're dedicated to freedom, if you really want to be free, if that's your main goal, if that's the your highest your highest priority, then you have no choice but the Libertarian Party. I mean, it's just that, it's that clear to me. So tell us some stories about running for governor. You must have some interesting stories out there about oh. the press and the debates and all that stuff. Well, it was just, uh, it was so hard to get attention, you know. Uh-huh. You know, so right during the campaign, there was a big uh, CWD scare, uh, uh, chronic wasting disease among the deer. Oh really? You know, so it was, and they were saying that it would transfer from the deers to the animals. So we had to shut down the hunting and all this in this area. So um, 
we call the press, big press conference at the uh, butcher shop in the heart of the area where they were going to shut down all hunting and not killing any. And you know, it, it got a lot of press. And uh, and two weeks later, my brother announced that he was going to uh, endorse McCallum, you know, uh -huh. his lieutenant governor. And uh, there had been no documented case of CWD ever transferring from deer to human beings uh -huh. and I was on the public radio uh, on the biggest talk show in uh, Milwaukee that morning that Tommy announced it said well we just read here that uh, your brother has just announced uh, that he's endorsing Scott McCallum I said yep that's the first documented case of CWD transferring in the country <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, so Tommy wasn't too happy with that wow so the uh, basically what happened was that the government was using this disease that didn't exist. Didn't exist. I mean, they just to grow well, it does itself. exist, but it's it's this fear thing, you right? Know? It was, and it's there was no documented case of this, and they found later that it was a big failure. All this money they had spent at the time it didn't work. They couldn't stop it the way they were trying to do by annihilating all the deer in this area. So, it's just another failed government program. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, just like which yeah, is a I, lot of I, it. I drove through Watts the other day, and it was still a slum after, you know, 40 years of government programs, billions of dollars, and I'm sure we can go to Iraq 40 years from now, and it still won't be a democracy either. But, no. You know, just... How are you going to bomb them into democracy <laughs> anyway? <laughs> it makes no sense. Does it? No, it certainly doesn't. What, you know... So what else happened... Instigate force against anybody is just inherently wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that's the core belief of a libertarian uh, being... You know, we won't initiate force against anybody, but the key is initiate, and that's what we're doing now in Iraq. We started that fight. There's no reason they didn't have weapons of mass destruction. What well, they found one bomb was made in 1990 with some seraphim in it. Oh, we got them now. <laughs> yeah, where are the weapons oh, yeah. of mass destruction? It's always a, a big government program that costs 300 billion dollars, and then it doesn't work. They always tell us because we need another 300 billion dollars. Last time we went into Iraq, they told us all the same things. They're telling us now, no, it's not. you know, that we could get rid of terrorism, peace to the Middle East, bring, do everything for everybody, take care of Saddam Hussein. And, it, you know, that was the same. That's what they told us last time. Now it tells us we need another $300 billion to go in there. And it's a welfare program. They're putting everyone in Iraq and Afghanistan on welfare oh and Medi-Cal and Medicaid and Social Security. They're bringing Hillary Care. Where's that money going to come from? It's going to come out of the backs of the taxpayers. That's right. 500 George Bush has raised uh, people's taxes by $5,000 every person in the United States for each year that for the next 10 shudder, years. That doesn't it? 5000 bucks. How is the average man going to pay for that? How it's, are they going to do it's that? It's too much money. We can't, I, know, I know people that can't afford to go downtown for beer. I know people that are senior citizens that can't afford the, their medication. And now they're going to put this war on their back. Mm -hmm. It's just that you know, we're... You know, this money has to come from somebody, and just cranking up the printing press isn't the answer. No, because yeah. that reduces the value of it, our money. It causes just inflation. another tax. So, what else happened during the campaign? You got uh, the, you got students involved at the colleges. Do you uh, any other any other war stories that are interesting well, from the campaign? Uh, well, right d during the heart of the campaign, they were having this big caucus scandal in Wisconsin, uh -huh. where they had found that the le legislature were hiring, were, the government employees were all working on the politicians' campaigns, and they were paying. It was just an incredible scandal. It was, it was it, you know, both sides' defense at the highest level were using their staffers, you know, that they weren't supposed to do it, and so we called a big press conference at the uh, at the Madison disposal plant. So, uh huh. A lot better smelling here than at the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't go over so big. But it, we had, uh, I don't, we just caught the imagination of the people. And they, right. were, they were, you know, I was allowed in two of the five debates. We raised $500,000 against $25 million, Wow. You know, so it just, we, did, we couldn't do one television ad. We spent $80,000 in the last two weeks on two radio ads. So with that, we did extremely well. So what, what, are the, what would you say to someone out there about the Libertarian Party? And I, mean, I think we're the party of the small businessman. Of course. You know, both you and I are both small businessmen. Of course. And I There's think that, no doubt about that. Yeah. I mean, the small businessmen in this country have got to realize that the Republican Party is definitely against them. 
I mean, they have to, they have to hear this and they have to know it that the Libertarian Party is the only party that's that is for the small businessman. And I and we're starting Wisconsin. That's who I have. I'm running a campaign for a for a, a man that's running for the state assembly. Uh -huh. And uh, he's going to get elected. And he's running against a 12-year incumbent. We've what got. happened to your uh, running mate? You had a uh, running mate that was a uh, ex-Democrat in the state assembly there? Yeah, he was, he was uh, a Democrat in the, in, at, in the assembly for 12 years, and then he was just going to quit that year and, uh, because he was so dissatisfied <laughs> with the state. You know, and They're good people in both parties, it's just that the parties themselves are corrupt. And uh, I contacted him and I said, Marty, Marty Reynolds was his name from Ladysmith, a local mayor, wonderful man. And I convinced him to join the Libertarian Party and to uh, take a shot at it. He got, he, was, he was a big help. That's wonderful. So did he, did he quit? Is he still Libertarian? He's still Libertarian. He's we still, need to get him to run and get back his seat yeah, back as a I Libertarian. Like, well, That'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it would be. How I would love to get him, because he would get win in that area. You know? That'd and be if, great. When, if we can start putting some people in the State House, Mark, that's the key. Yeah. You know, and then if, if this man wins, this Tom Keister wins in the assembly where I'm working so hard for him now, mm -hmm. and he's a he's a 63 year old. He owns a su uh, restaurant like I do, supper club, uh -huh. and uh, and a couple other taverns. Uh, big family, very intelligent, uh, not educated but smart, and you know, uh -huh. knows how a buck is made. And uh, he's taken on a 12-year attorney, uh, law, uh, Republican, and he's going to beat her. That's wonderful. We have, you know, we're getting more and more people getting into city councils, the nonpartisan offices, boards and commissions all over the country. And that's, I think, where, you know, our focus is now getting into the grassroots. And hopefully then we'll be able to get up into the state assemblies and get partisan libertarians elected. And I encourage you to do that as well, because, you know, state assembly in your area may be doable. Are you I thought about, about that. that? I, I gave it serious consideration this time, you know, and I thought, I think I probably could have did that. You know, when I see uh, Representative Ron Paul talk, I, yeah. I, I want to be out there. <laughs> I want to, you know, I want to say, run as the Libertarians, uh, Dr. Paul, and, I, and I, you know, I'll be with you out here. And, that's uh -huh. what I, and I'm giving a serious consideration of making a run for Congress. I think, you, I think you should because you have some popularity there. Everyone knows who you are. Yeah, in my area, in that area, I won. Yeah. I beat both the, uh, you know. Well, see, And there I you beat go. Tommy in our hometown. There you go. And he ran in a two-way race and I ran in a three-way race. <laughs> there you go. You see? So you can win it. And I really wish you would because we need to get those L's. You, know, you see the yeah. D and I you see, see the any. R. We need to see the Maybe L's out there. Maybe one or two eyes, but no L's, <laughs> and we need an L. We need more. Mark, what you're doing is so tremendous. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate that. Opening up the people that. to this throughout the country, and this, you know, it is so incredibly important that people just, you know, stop all the the rhetoric that's been uh, been passed on your whole life, and just we're take an honest budgets. look where we're going, where those we're parties going. are going, where are they taking you. Has your taxes ever went down? Never. No. Has the government always grown bigger? Always. Have are you going to believe rights? that's going to change? Never. Is this, where is your civil rights? Are, are, do you feel that they're being protected? Of course not. They're being trampled upon. So look at us. Look at the Libertarian Party. You want to be free? Then join the party that believes in freedom. You know, how else can you do it? <laughs> so what do you... What do you say to basically to young people out there? You know, the, I think the young, the younger you are, the, the more you understand the more that voting is futile is. because the Republicans and Democrats are the same party. Yeah, that's one party. No matter how you cut the cake, you call Republicrats, Demo Republicans, I don't care what you call them, it is one party. You know, they're both, you can go with, with any administration back to the 50s and just watch. We, it doesn't, has never made a difference. It's always gotten bigger yeah. and cost us more money. And so regardless if your mother or your father were Republican or Democrat or it's been passed down, it's, they wouldn't have been if they knew what was going on. And it's time for the true patriots, the true lovers of freedom in this country to just stop and just say, where are we going? Please, please open your eyes and see that this is evil. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they say, Martin Luther said, War is the greatest of all evils, 
And what are we doing? How many wars have we been in? This president's got us to do already. And he's got to get out of there or he's going to he's losing the election over it. And it was now we've seen, I think most Americans see, that was a horrible folly. It was just so we made such a worse mess. How of it, many I think, people have lost their lives? How many yeah. mother buried their children? How many people lost their limbs and their eyes over this? Over what? And I don't think we're going to get anything out of this war over there. It's not going to happen. What can we possibly win? Mm -hmm. You know, they say it's for oil. It stays for, you know, please. Nobody has to die. No mother should have to bury their children. No coffin should come home flagged. Right? We're, you know. How are you going to, how are you going to get people to come our way by killing them? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just an evil thing to do. Murder is always wrong, legal or not. Yeah, I think that the people of Iraq uh, probably tr don't trust us at all now. And also, how many more terrorists have we created? How many more Osama bin Laden? Today, I do not feel safer. I certainly Definitely do not. not. Feel safe. You know, I think that we should have put that money into finding the people that were responsible for 9/11. And then also make sure yeah. that this does, if that the doesn't mob did it, again. If the mafia did it, we wouldn't have went against war against, uh, uh, you know, Italy, would we? No, I mean, it's, <laughs> would we? No, no, we wouldn't. That's a good, that's a good know, analogy. This was, this was uh, gangsters. This is Al Qaeda. This wasn't a, a sovereign nation. And, and terrorism isn't a country. It's a tactic. Uh -huh. It's a tactic. And it's a, a war tactic. And then terrorism is going on since the beginning of time. They sunk the Lusitania. Ireland and England has been going at it. Israel and uh, Palestine. Uh, come on. And we're getting stuck You're in never this, not this, gonna have this, terrorism. this warfare that's just uh, a, a war that could just go on forever. Ed, I want to thank you for coming out today. Mark, it's been my pleasure. Thank uh, you so much for allowing me. And if anyone else out there has any more, would like any more information about the Libertarian Party, please join us online at www.lp.org or you can call 1-800-ELECT-US and we'll send you out a free packet of information. Thanks a lot again and we'll see you next time on The Libertarian Alternative. Yeah.